It might look like an ATV, but it's definitely not an ATV. This is a light, tactical wheeled vehicle that's the only one in its class. The sole purpose of the invention of the Prowler was to serve the military. They analyzed and assessed countless military operations and then built the Prowler based on data. As for those who say these things are just like an ordinary ATV, we should point out that the Prowlers are more reliable, stable, faster, and more rugged. On top of all this, they can carry greater payloads than any ATV currently on the market. It's fully automatic, and a V-twin liquid-cooled engine powers the four-wheel drive. Inside, they have sealed tubular steel construction and chrome alloy. They have high clearance, which makes them perfect for off-road missions. Their tight turning radius makes them easily maneuverable. Top that off with a payload capacity of 1,600 pounds, 725 kilograms, and you have a real Prowler. Oh, but that's not the best part. The best part is the fact that these things have a 3,000 pound, 1,350 kilogram towing capacity. And finally, with a speed of 75 miles per hour, 120 kilometers per hour, these things can reach their 300 mile, 480 kilometer range in just four hours. It might not be the fastest military vehicle on this list, but it does pull its own weight. These M Gators are manufactured by Deere and Company, and they were built specifically to transport cargo or evacuate people from some critical combat scenarios. Speaking of payload, they can carry 1,650 pounds, 750 kilograms, thanks to the powerful Yanmar four cycle diesel engine with a displacement of 854 cc. However, as we've said, it does have its flaws. The M Gator can't travel at speeds over 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour. Despite this, they're still being used by the U.S. Marine Corps, the Canadian Forces, and the Belgian Land Forces. It's only 9 feet, 2.74 meters long, and 5 feet, 1.5 meters wide. To make things easier for the Navy, the manufacturer has made two versions of the M Gator. The M Gator A1 is suitable for deploying in missions all over the world. The M Gator A2 is suitable for hauling and towing. DPV stands for Desert Patrol Vehicle. They were developed by the U.S. during the Gulf War. In fact, these DPVs were used extensively in Operation Desert Storm, and the first forces to enter Kuwait City were the SEALs in these DPVs. The company behind them was Chenoweth Racing Products Incorporated, but Volkswagen, a manufacturer from Germany, was the first one to come up with a light utility vehicle, which was based on the VW Beetle. Because of their small size, their mobility, and all of that armament, these DPVs are smashing that like button, just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, these DPVs are still in service to this day. They use a 2-liter air-cooled engine which produces 200 horsepower. This allows them to reach a max speed of 60 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per hour. They also have a payload capacity of around 1,500 pounds, 680 kilograms. On a tank full of gas, these DPVs can go for 200 miles without needing to be refueled. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, this is the smallest tank ever produced in the world. It's made by How and How Technologies, which specializes in making armored vehicles for the military. Currently, the Badger is not used by militaries as it's a new technology, but SWAT teams love to bust through walls with this thing. In fact, that's precisely what the Badger was made to do. You're never going to know what it's like to be visited by the Badger until it comes crashing through your wall, says Michael Howe, one of the two brothers that founded the company. It's a one-man, all-terrain vehicle, and it can breach wooden walls, cinder block barriers, and much more. As for the size, it's only 32 inches wide, which means it's perfect for going through a door. As you can see, the front of the armored steel is angled, this is tactically done because the more angled the front of the Badger is compared to the person shooting at it, the more likely it'll deflect bullets. Armor-piercing rounds, AK-47s, nothing will get through this bad boy. A handgun won't even scratch the paint. Well, that's all good until it goes over a landmine, right? Nope. The Badger's been tested against explosives, and it withstood a blast that shot it 8 feet, 2.5 meters, into the air. On the inside, there were about 25 Gs so the driver survived the crash. Produced from 1956 to 1970, these four-wheel drive vehicles were used widely by the military. The official name was M274 Truck Platform Utility Half-Ton. This means that the truck itself weighed 1,100 pounds, 500 kilograms, 
However, the company that produced them had built six different versions for the various military missions. Their models ranged from this plain-looking mule with just one seat to an intimidating M27 4A5 with a recoilless rifle. Most of these mules used a two-cylinder, four-cycle Continental Hercules air-cooled engine, and five of these models had four-wheel drive. The platform was made from magnesium alloy, which made it durable. Is it a car? Is it a tank? Well, this one's both. It has the durability and look of a tank, but it's usually the same size as a car. Their role was simple, provide light infantry support and sometimes even partake in some scouting missions. These small tanks were used during the Second World War and they were very popular between 1920 and 1940. Take for example the Ford 3-ton, which had a total length of only 14 feet 4 .3 meters, and a width and height of 6 feet 1 .8 meters. It was operated by a crew of two people. One of them was the driver and the other the gunner. Speaking of guns, it had a 30 caliber Browning M1917 Marlin machine gun. Its maximum speed was a measly 8 miles per hour, 12.8 kilometers per hour, and it had a range of only 34 miles, 55 kilometers. In France, Renault was building these tankettes. However, the most popular tankettes that most resembled the regular sized tanks of the time and were the most popular were the Weasel 1 and Weasel 2. A company from the UK called Enhanced Protection Systems has smashed that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, they built the Springer ATV specifically for the needs of the UK Army. It might look like a simple ATV for two people, but the Springer ATV has a cargo bed which can carry loads up to one ton. They also have an 8,000-pound, 3,600-kilogram self-recovery winch coupled with sand ladders. But you want to know what surprised us the most? We thought that this simple-looking ATV was harmless. However, it turns out there are SA-80A2 standard assault rifles available for the two members, and of course, thanks to the ground clearance of almost 15 inches, 378 millimeters, this ATV is perfect for all off-road missions. It's the first of the smallest military vehicles on this list built in South Africa. The company behind it is LMT Products, and they have an 8x8 configuration and are capable of carrying four soldiers. The weight of the Gecko ATV is 2,700 pounds, 1,225 kilograms. The payload capacity stands at roughly two-thirds of the overall weight, or 2,000 pounds, 900 kilograms. It's only 10 feet, 3.1 meters long, and has a width of 5 feet 6 inches, 1.65 meters. The power comes from the Dahatsu DM950T diesel engine, which produces 35 horsepower and a maximum road speed of 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. The total range of this South African Gecko ATV is 155 miles, 250 kilometers. It's an all-terrain mobility platform that became popular for the manufacturers by the name of Supercat. The British Army has used these six-wheeled vehicles since 1988. They weigh exactly two tons and have a length of 12 feet, 3.44 meters. The width from wheel to wheel is around 6 feet or 2.03 meters. In the back, it has a cargo bed, and in the front, two crew members can sit and drive the Supercat. It might not have any armor to protect the drivers, but it does have low pressure tires and a 7.62 millimeter general purpose machine gun. The top speed of the Supercat stands at 40 miles per hour or 64 kilometers per hour. Remote control tanks are finally here. A company called Kalishnikov Concern has been working on building a small tank-like crewless vehicle that's equipped with a machine gun and anti-tank missiles. These can be modified to a 30mm gun or laser-guided anti-tank missiles. But that's not all CEO Alexei Krivorechko has been planning to make. He wants to supersize this very same model and build one that's about 20 tons unmanned and equipped with more powerful armament. It'd be three times the size of the current Ceratnik, and it'd be roughly the same size as the M1126 Striker ICV. Bye for now.